If you remember our big picture, we're currently here. We have represented documents as shingles and more specifically, high dimensional binary vectors. And next, we will go through the main hash method and the LSH method. You might be wondering, why can't we just directly use the shingles to find similar documents? Well, suppose we need to find near duplicate documents, about 1 million documents. And naively, we will have to compute pairwise Jakar similarities for every pair of documents. And that would be about 5 times 10 to the power of 11 comparisons. Plus, the documents are now represented by us as high dimensional vectors. Therefore, even comparing one pair would be quite expensive. So let's say that you can compare 10 to the power of six pairs per second. That will still take you five days to complete the computation. And if you're going for 10 million, it will take more than a year to finish. So this is why we need step two, which is mean hashing, to convert large sets to small signatures while preserving similarity. So to know more about mean hash, let's start with encoding sets as big vectors. Recall that many similarity problems can be formalized as finding subsets that have significant intersections. For example, if we look at these two sets, the larger the intersection is, the more similar these sets are. So we can basically encode sets using 0, 1 vectors or bit Boolean vectors. And each of the dimension will represent one element in the universal set. And we can interpret the set intersection as bitwise n. And we can also interpret the set union as bitwise all. Let's take a look at this example. Let's say that we have two sets, C1 and C2. And the universal set has five points. And in C1, we have four points, which is represented by a five bit vector here. And in C2, we have also four points. And it's also represented by a big vector. And if we want to calculate the intersection between these two sets, we only need to take the bitwise n. If you look at these two bit vectors, the bitwise n would be just 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So the size of intersection would be 3. And of course, the size of union would be, would be 5, because all of them would be 1. So the Jakar similarity would be 3 over 5, and the distance will be will be 1 minus 3 over 5, which is 2 over 5. Now let's go to the actual documents. To represent documents, we can use rows to represent the elements or shingles, and we can use columns to represent sets or documents. Let's, for example, let's look at this input matrix where we have each column to represent a set of shingles. This is column one representing document one, and this is column two for document two. And we can see that this document one has five shingles. The document two has four shingles. And typically, this matrix will be very sparse. And each document is a column. For example, let's see what's the similarity between column one and column two, or document one and document two. And the intersection size will be three because if we look at the first row, the second row, and the sixth row, only, only they are of the bit one. And the size of union will be six. Therefore, the Jacquard similarity will be three over six. And the Jacquard distance will be one minus that which is also three over six. So, so far we have represents the document as a set of shingles. And then we represent the sets of shingles as Boolean vectors in the matrix. And the next step will be to compress this high dimensional Boolean vectors into low dimensional signatures. 
or short signatures. And we want the similarity of these columns, which is the original Boolean vectors, to be the same as the similarity of the short signatures. To write that down more clearly, the outline of our, our approach would be to first obtain the signatures of the column, that's the small summaries of the columns, and then we'll examine pairs of signatures to find the similar columns. And one essential thing is that the similarities of the signatures and the similarities of the columns should be related. And this is actually the key of mean hashing. And optionally, you can also check to confirm that the columns with similar signatures are really similar. Several warnings here. Note that comparing all the pairs may take too much time. For example, at one million, one million documents, then you will need uh, the computational time of one million square. And reducing this time is the job for LSH, which we will cover later. And also these methods can produce false negative and even false positive if the optional check is not made. So the main idea of mean hashing is that we, we will try to hash each column C, which is typically very high dimension, to a small signature HC, such that this HC is small enough that the signature can fit into the main memory. And the second criteria is that we want the similarity of the C1 and C2, basically one pair of the documents to be the same as the similarity of the signatures, the HC1 and HC2. So the goal basically, you can say it as that we try to find a hash function such that the similarity of C1 and C2, that's document one and two, if the similarity is high, then with high probability, their signatures are identical. And if the similarity of document one and document two is low, then with high probability, their signature will not be identical. So basically we are trying to hash the documents into bucket and expect that most pairs of near duplicate documents will be hashed into the same bucket. If their signatures are the same, then that basically means that they are, they are in the same bucket. So clearly this hash function that we're trying to define, it, it all depends on the similarity matrix, right? Basically, it depends on the form of the sim function that we define here, but not all similarity metrics have a suitable hash function. But luckily for us, there is actually a suitable hash function for Jakar similarity, and it is called min hashing. So what is min hashing? Let's imagine that we have the rows of the Boolean matrix permuted under some random permutation pipe. So we might permute some of the rows in this matrix, and we can, and then we define a hash function h pi of c to be the index of the first row in which column c has value one. And mathematically, we can write it down like this. To see this more clearly, let's look at an example. Let's say that we have the c as a document here, and then we perform the permutation, and we will check the row of c one by one. Let's check the first row, second row, and the third row. And the third row is the first time that we got the one. Therefore, the hash value for this hash function is actually three. And of course, we can use several independent hash functions to create a longer signature of a column. For example, if we use three independent hash function, then we can basically compress the column of length seven to another column of length three. Basically, we are having, we're going to be able to have a signature matrix of three by four. Let's go through it step by step to see how we can get the signature matrix. Let's say that this is the input matrix where each column represents one document. As we can see, the first document has four singles. 
and we have this permutation. And according to this, according to this permutation, let's focus on document one. And according to this permutation, we will first check the first row and it's zero. If it's zero, then we'll go ahead to check the second row, which is here. And this is the first time that we hit a one. Therefore, we can see that the signature, the first signature of the first document will be two because the second row is the first to map to a one. And similarly, we will look if we have another permutation, which corresponds to a second hash function, we will again check the rows one by one. And this time let's uh, switch to a different document. Let's, let's focus on document three. Okay, and we will check the rows one by one. We'll first check row one and we got them zero. Then we, so we will go ahead to check row two. It's also zero. And then we'll go ahead to check row three, zero. And we'll go ahead to check row four. And it is, a, it is finally a one. So basically the fourth row is the first to map the one. Therefore the corresponding signature for the third document will be four. And we can do similar stuff for the third permutation, which is the third hash function. And when this is all completed, we can get a signature matrix of three by four from the input matrix of seven by four.